Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I just forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What's going on, fourth graders? Welcome to episode number five of the Math FSA Bootcamp series. Before we tackle these problems together, I want you to go ahead and try number one and number two on your own. If you're thinking to yourself, but Miss McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet. Don't worry, I've got your back. There should be a link below that will take you to the worksheets for this series. That way you can jot down the same information on your own. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, try number one, try number two, and then come on back and see me. Welcome back, everybody. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so this one says, which of the following statements, that's down here, is, ooh, these can be kind of tricky, is not true about the number 39. Okay, so we're looking for something that is false. Sometimes that word not true can kind of confuse us, so we need to keep on checking back to make sure it's not true. Looking here, we've got four answer choices, and there should be one that is not true, which means that there should be three that are true. And this question type is a multiple choice, so make sure you've written that down. All right, so let's go through each one. 39 is a prime number. Well, what does prime mean? Prime means that it only has a factor of one and itself. This is what I like to call a factor rainbow that we're gonna get into. So let's take a look at number 39 and see if it's prime. If it's composite, it means that it has two. So composite means that it has one and itself and more. Okay, more than one. This will help us determine whether A or C is right. So 39, we know that we, that one times 39 equals 39. Okay, I like to do this with a factor rainbow. I also break down how to find the factors of numbers in the McCarthy Math 155 series. So stay tuned to the end, because if you're not, if you don't feel like you've quite mastered the skill of factoring and finding factors and finding multiples, then I've got tons of videos for you, okay, to really nail it. But here we're just going through the test as if you already know it. If you need more help, I've got your back. Just stay tuned. Okay, so two. Well, it wouldn't be two because if we look at the ones place, nine is an odd number, so it can't be two. Let's try a factor of three though. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and divide and see if I can get it. So three, going into three. So I know I could multiply times 10 to get 30. And then if I, if I subtract that, I'll get nine. And three goes into nine three times, which would be nine, subtract and we get zero. 
So now if I add up right here my partial quotients, that would be 13, which means that 3 times 13 gives us 39. Oops, that's not supposed to be 39, it's supposed to be 13. <laughs> that's why you should use a pencil in case you make mistakes. I use a pen just because it shows up better for you. But so 3 and 13 are also factors of 39. Here I chose to use the partial quotients method for division, which I also show you how to do in McCarthy Math 155. I'm also a fan of the standard way, the long division way, um, which I didn't do that here. But um, so because of that, we can determine that 39 is not a prime number because it has more than just one in itself. Therefore, it is composite. So no, it's a composite number. So this one is not true. We're trying to look for the one that is not true. So we're thinking it's probably going to be this one. Which of the following statements is not true? We know that 39 is not a prime number. So that's probably the one it's going to be. Let's look at B. 39 is a multiple of 3, which is true because we know that 3 times 13 will give us 39. It's the reverse of what we just did over here. So this one is true, which makes it something that we eliminate because we're looking for what is not true. 39 is a composite number. Well, we just proved that right here, right? It had factors of 1, 3, 13, and 39. So this is true, which means it's not the answer we want. We want the one that is not true, the one that is false. Choice D says the factors of 39 are 1, 3, 13, and 39, which is true right here. So this is true, which is not what we want. We want the one that is not true, the one that is false, which is A. It is not a prime number because it has more than one and itself as a factor. Make sure that you are showing your journey on paper too, showing all of the thinking. It helps to slow you down and really think about each problem. I love to mark up my text just like this and I hope that this is inspiring you to do the same. All right, let's take a look at number two. All right, so it says the factors of 24. So when I think of factors, I think of a factor rainbow, which I dive into in McCarthy Math 155. I'll send you there to the episodes that you can check out to help you there. Okay, so the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, blank, 8, 12, and 24. What is the missing value? That's that guy right there. All right, so again, let's go ahead and just bust out our factor rainbow. They've already given us quite a bit of information here. So the first factor that we can consider would be 1 times 24 would give us 24. That's these two. We know that four is in the ones place, four is even, and therefore has a factor of two. Two times what gives us 24? Two times 12, which is right here, two and 12. Use what you have to help you. All right, now we also know that three is gonna end up being one. Three times what? gives us 24. Well, let me use the multiplication mashup to help me. Hit me with my threes pretty, please. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. That would be eight times, right? Three times eight would give us 24. So three and eight. And finally, we know that it's gonna be four. Let's count by fours to see what four times what will give us 24. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, six times, okay? Which happens to be the missing value there. So for the gridded response, I can either put my six right here, all the way at the left, or over here, all the way at the right. Whatever your teacher has been telling you to do, follow your teacher's guide. I like to start over here. That's just me, but whatever you do, whether it's here or here is totally cool, but whatever you do, do not put it like randomly in the middle. That's not gonna get you the right answer. And don't forget to bubble it in. That is how the computer will scan your answer and determine if you are correct or incorrect. So now let's talk about where you can get some more practice videos for the skills that we talked about in this episode. First, I'm going to include a link to McCarthy Math 155 
Unit 5 and check out Days 53 through 59. Now McCarthy Math 155 is a membership, but you can get seven days for free. So if you need some help, check out those videos. Teachers, I tried to make this really affordable for you. It's also something that schools have purchased for their teachers. You can use these videos. You can share them with your students. I explain how to do that on the website, on the tutorials tab. So check that out. That's 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, seven videos walking you through the difference between a prime and composite number, how to factor numbers, how to find multiples of numbers, the same things that we were talking about in this episode. I really break it down. So check that out. The next link that I'm going to include is to the How to Pass the Math FSA series. This is a series that I created several years ago, but I created it back when it was going to be a computerized test. It's not a computer-based test anymore. It's a paper and pencil test, a paper-based test, which is why I'm creating the boot camp to update some of the questions that you see. However, the How to Pass the Math FSA series still has great questions for you. Just keep in mind that it was back in the day when it was a computerized test. Third, the multiplication mashup. I use the multiplication mashup in this episode to help me with factoring, helping me with finding multiples, all of that. So definitely check out the multiplication mashup if you have not already. It will help you to get more fluent with your multiplication facts. To stay in the know with everything McCarthy Math Academy, make sure that you're following me on either Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy, on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and of course on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. While you're at it on YouTube, if you found this video to be helpful, informational, even just a little bit, every time that you tap that like button, it really helps to generate more engagement on my, on my channel, which gets more students to my channel so I can help more students and more teachers to be successful when it comes to third, fourth, and fifth grade math. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And of course, before we go, I want to remind you that you were born for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones, you're the generation that we've been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because this generation of awesome kids and teachers is going to shake it up and change the world. I just know it. When you have the choice, remember to choose kindness and you always have the choice to choose kindness. So please choose it. We need more kind people in the world. With that said, I hope to see you in episode number six. Bye.